Let's welcome in our co-hosts on the morning, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, one of the few people around here who is used to being surrounded by water. Bill, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. This morning I was surrounded by trees. I, as I was getting ready to leave this morning, Bonnie said, we're a rain slicker. I said, us fellows don't need rain slickers. So I stepped outside and driving out, two trees were down. So I had to go walk to the barn to get my chainsaw and cut them up. And by the time I got through cutting them up and got the chainsaw back in the barn, I was dripping wet. And I walked back in the house and said, Bonnie, you're right. I should have been wearing a slicker this morning. <laughs> but easier if you just listen to your wife, Bill. <laughs> yeah, we, we came with, we discussed that earlier and the three of us all allowed that that's a, something we we should do more often we should yeah. we still don't learn our lessons though so welcome in uh delegate michael height the badger good morning sir good morning sir good to be here be good and if i turn your microphone up thanks sir good to be here yeah. <laughs> watching the badger get ready to go on air was quite a routine yeah. he checked his hair he checked his earphones he smiled a couple of times he was playing to the camera before we went on air <laughs> I was trying to get a place to put my glasses. <laughs> oh, or, or that's a possibility too. You, you actually have adopted the uh, the nickname you got on this show. The badger now is uh, easily identifiable. Yeah, I, I I took it as a badge of honor, and uh, yeah. It's on your car now as a license tag. It is. Tag. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Those of you on the radio side can't see the uh, license plate now for Delegate Michael Knight indeed says Badger next to the uh, picture of the Capitol. It's a good looking place. So when I cut you off, you'll know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> very well. Very well played, sir. I uh, hope you're safe out there. I know, uh, obviously, the ground is already saturated. Uh, I was talking to Matt Miller, you know, just the challenges with those of you who maybe live by creeks or whatever, well in septic uh, right now, it's uh, obviously more than the ground can handle. And there is a lot of issues with that too. And uh, and also trees coming down. There's a real risk now as wet yeah. as this uh, ground is for trees to come down. Yeah. Well, let's be careful and be safe out there. And if you don't have to go someplace this morning, you know, don't. Just uh, hang out for a while, listen to the show, or watch it. There was an article done recently. West Virginia Public Broadcasting's Brianna Heaney uh, did it. It's called "Dark Money Groups." Spins local election and national initiative to help big pharma, and it uh, refers to the 340B program, which I was not all that familiar with before this article. Brianna joins us via telephone right now. Brianna, good morning. Thanks so much for taking the time to do this interview with us today. Yeah, good morning. The uh, the article is uh, is fascinating in that it kind of opens your eyes up to the stand uh, for us stand up for us back and. The uh, connection between Big Pharma and the election efforts to remove Craig Blair from the state legislature. So you looked into this, and if you could uh, share the inspiration for why you began to look into this and write this particular article. Yeah, um, well, uh, during um, our show um, at West Virginia Public Broadcasting, we have a show that airs um, Monday through Friday during the legislative session. Um, and it's a 30-minute show where we just talk about what's going on in the legislature. Um, and uh, you can watch it <clears throat> on whatever channel PBS is on um, or on YouTube. But uh, it was actually kind of a slower news day um, at the Capitol. But this bill had passed, and um, Senator Mike Maroney had come up to me and, and told me how important the bill was and uh, explained the ins and outs of it all, which went over my head. And then when we got back to the office, we decided we were going to do some programming on it and uh, two hours down <laughs> a rabbit hole trying to understand how this program actually works. Um, I was kind of, yeah, just amazed at how big of a program it was and how impactful of a program it was. Um, and uh, I have friends and family in healthcare. I talked to them about it. Nobody knew what it was. So we were kind of excited to cover it in um, the legislature today. Um, and then when I heard it come up a few weeks after I had known that uh, Senator Blair had lost his election and that it was a group um, involved uh, with 340B that had spent a lot of money um, putting ads out against him, it, it caught my interest. Mike, how familiar are you with 340B? Uh, well, 
<laughs> now I'm very familiar with it. No, no, I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry, Brianna. I was talking to Delegate Mike Hyde, who's sitting to my left oh. right now. Yeah, I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, you know, before this past session, I wasn't familiar with it at all. But because it came up and it was a bill and you had to look into it a little bit, you had to do some research and figure out what it was all about. You got to know it a little bit better. And, um, you know, I, I guess in our opinion, uh, the legislature, that it was a, a, a good program, that it benefited, um, you know, people in rural areas that, and the people in need um, but it needed some guardrails and, mm-hmm. and some legislative uh, and, and that's why the bill came along and, and I, I have to say the bill that that we're talking about here um, was voted on in the House and Senate with only one I think one no vote uh, which was Coop Gonzalez um, so this was uh, nearly unanimous in the legislature to pass this bill Brianna, then uh, take it uh, from here now in terms of how this particular passage of the bill was used against Senate President Craig Blair specifically. Yeah, it. I mean, it should be noted it wasn't only used against um, Craig Blair, it was used against other legislators as well. Um, but in Craig's Blair's, in Craig Blair's case, um, it was uh, basically used to kind of infuse a lot of culture war topics like immigration um, and uh, issues like related to uh, transgender people. Um, and uh, those issues were kind of mixed into 340B, which regardless of what side of those issues you fall on, um, 340B has nothing to do with either of those things whatsoever. Um, and so... Basically, they, uh, yeah, they kind of conflated 340B with those different issues, said that, like, for example, 340B was this program that laundered money to give free health care to undocumented um, immigrants, and that Craig Blair, knowing that, uh, you know, passed the bill or other things, saying, like, he had, (laughs) it just is comical to say that he had uh, caved to the far uh, left in doing so, um, different stuff like that. So the the uh, Stand For Us PAC, do I, do I have that language correct, by the way? The Stand yeah. For Us PAC, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> the Stand For Us PAC and Big Pharma, is there a specific tie-in there that the Stand For Us PAC would, uh, would put so much money into an advertising campaign? No, there's no tie that we've been able to find because, again, Stand For Us is a dark money group. There is um, there's really no way to trace um, the that I have been able to trace um, who their donors are um, and uh, stuff like that. So no, I could I wouldn't I, I wouldn't say that Big Pharma was directly involved or any known Big Pharma group was directly involved or a donor. But at the end of the day, this is a bill that um, some pharmaceutical lobbies and companies have. Um, lobbied again and um oh wait my alarm's going off anyway sorry um that some uh <clears throat> big pharma um and they have, that they've lobbied against and uh that um sorry what were you going the question yeah and, and it's a, if you could tie in uh just i'll just re kind of construct it here the big pharma tie in on this and how this uh, was affected with uh, Senator Blair? Yeah, and the three forty B. Yeah, so um, there there is no direct link to Big Pharma. There's no direct, like I said, there's no um, there's nothing showing that Big Pharma had donated to this disinformation campaign. Now, of course, in um, the uh, Judiciary Committee, um, there was a lobbyist who came from a pharmaceutical lobby who lobbied against the bill that was passed. Bill, um, Senate Bill 325, um, but did so on, you know, stating some of the problems with the program and stuff like that, and talked about some real problems that actually do exist in the program. However, the lobby that went out, uh, the, the information that went out against this, the dense information that went out against this, just came from this group, Stand For Us, and then another group, um, uh, building a better America, and and neither of those groups, since we're not able to trace the donors, we don't know where that money came from. We don't know who that money came from. But what is clear is that 
you know, this is a group that pharmaceuticals, ha- this is a bill that pharmaceuticals have lobbied against. And this is now a bill that this group, you know, uh, basically did a disinformation campaign on also um, going against. And I think, I think that's the, the Colin, real- go ahead and slide that uh, photo uh, picture over, by the way. We have an example of the, of the mailer that went out in regards to Craig Blair. You can see they dressed him up in a clown suit and such and that's part of the disinformation and and that's the the key here that they they totally misrepresented this bill um in in their uh advertising um against blair that this bill was meant to put additional guardrails um on the 340b program in the state of west virginia um and they made it sound like that that you know the legislature was was voting to expand it to to other areas and that's just not true this was was meant to limit it and make sure that the purpose of the 340b program was being followed and it was meant to uh, save money downstream it, the patients would actually pay less for their prescription drugs um, and what we are finding out is hospitals and uh, pharma or pharmacies and so on so they were pocketing the difference um, because there were no guardrails on it. So this was an effort to help the program um, and put more guardrails on it, and, and this group totally misrepresented um, the whole program. Brianna, do you have, this is Bill Stubblefield. Do you have any idea at all why Craig Blair was targeted? Um, yeah, but I guess some of the information I just heard doesn't sound correct to me, actually. <laughs> okay. From what I reported on it, I'd just like to say this uh, – from my understanding, that's not what the bill did, but okay. Okay. Well, you want to respond, Mike, or you want me to go no, back no, to my no. question, why, why why Craig was was targeted? Do you have any idea? Um, why Craig was targeted? Um, hmm. I, I really don't know. I think that, uh, honestly, that's anybody's guess, but... Um, because I'm picking up on what Mike Height said earlier that only one or two people uh, in both houses voted against the bill. So the, they had a lot of folks they wanted to target, and you said there's probably more than Craig Blair, but there's the question arises, why did they choose support yeah. uh, to target I Craig? So, so to go back on the bill, and let's just talk about maybe um, what the bill um, does. Uh, because I don't believe the delegate fully understands what the bill does. Um, the bill fines um, any pharmaceutical company uh, $50,000 per prescription per day um, for their failure um, to uh, send prescriptions to 340B um, pharmacies. Okay, And the reason that they did this was because um, 340B is a program that was passed 30 years ago. And it was signed into law by H.W. Bush, um, and uh, it it really has it has a multitude of purposes that it was meant for. You know, one was to help low and middle income people who have either you know have insurance, but it doesn't cover the full cost of their you know maybe they ha- like you have insurance, but you're you take insulin, you could still be spending a thousand two thousand dollars a month on that insulin. Okay, so this program could help you bring down that cost and afford that. It also can help keep black lung clinics, sickle cell clinics, HIV clinics, and and rural hospitals, um, you know, afloat. And these are all nonprofit organizations that sometimes go years um, operating in the red. Um, So, you know, with negative operating margins. And we've seen that in the past 10 years, hospitals closing, clinics closing because they just can't make ends meet and they're, they're operating in the red for too long, so they close. This program is aimed at, at helping, abating that problem, keeping that open. The program has grown a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. In the last 30 years that it has been, um, <clears throat> that it has been uh, you know, since it was signed into law. And um, now there are contract pharmacies. So let's say a hospital, which is covered under 340B, they can – especially in a rural place like West Virginia, you know, you could be an hour, hour and a half drive away from a hospital. So if you need to get that 340B medicine, that discounted medicine, 
if you had to, if you could only get it from the hospital, then you'd be driving an hour and a half. So there's these contract pharmacies, which were kind of like, think of it like an octopus arm. You know, they, they were satellite pharmacies to this hospital that they were, they had a contract through. In that contract, it kind of stated out the ways that the different funds could be used. Again, this is not a nonprofit hospital, so the funds could not um, be pocketed or used for profit. That is, um, yeah, the, the funds can't be used for that. Um, and there's federal guidelines um, and federal reporting requirements um, that would make it to where the funds could be used for that. Now, do note, this is a $50 billion program, so I'm sure there is misuses here and fraud there. But, I mean, there are guidelines, there is oversight, and there is enforcement to those guidelines. That being said, um, Mm -hmm. those pharmacies have that contract with the hospital. Well, pharmaceuticals over time had stopped sending those medications to those contract pharmacies. They were only sending them to the hospital, and the hospital could choose one pharmacy to send it to if they didn't have a pharmacy of their own. So let's say a, a a uh, hospital had eight contract pharmacies. Um, now they could only send it to one, which was causing some West Virginia residents to have to drive, I mean, an hour, an hour plus to get medication that their life depended on that they could afford. And so this bill, Senate Bill 325, um, it, it, it didn't expand the program, but it didn't limit it either. It just created a um, really a way to punish pharmaceutical companies that um, <clears throat> to punish pharmaceutical companies that were refusing were refusing to send or I guess punish it probably isn't the right word but okay let's just say to levy a fine on pharmaceutical companies um, that weren't sending those medicines to the pharmacies that's a very and good, the reason very good they went after Craig Blair is probably because um, he is a. I, I, I don't. I actually don't really feel comfortable speculating on why they went after Craig Flair, but I guess we could just say like what happened when they did go after Craig Flair. It made a big okay. splash. Yeah, let me expand that question a little bit. Uh, how many incumbents did they go after, and what was the dis- uh, the distribution between Republicans and Democrats? My question is: Were there a select group, and were there one political party, uh, i.e., the Republican Party, because that's where Craig is? Well, that's pretty much all there is in Charleston. Well, there there yeah. are there are a few <laughs> others, yeah. So, so well, there is there was no um, there were right now there's three Democrats in the Senate out of uh, 34. And none of those Democrats are running for re are are so one is is has uh, more time he, like he's he wasn't running for election this year and the other two um, are retiring yeah. so there really wasn't as far as I know in those races there wasn't any standing politician who was rerunning for election who was a Democrat for them to go after. How about, um, how about the Republicans? How many other Republicans were targeted besides Craig Blair? Do you know? Yeah, they yes, there was um, four other Republicans targeted, um, and those were all people who um, sat on the Health Committee um, and uh, who were up for re-election and um, who you know kind of pushed the bill forward a bit or spoke out you know positively against the bill. Uh, Craig Blair again wasn't one of those those people. It's not like C- C- Craig Blair left the um, the podium and came down and spoke in favor of the bill. He did vote yes on the bill, but I think going after Craig Blair, you know, he's been in politics for nearly 25 years. He, again, was, you know, worked in the Senate. He was the Senate president. Um, I think that going after somebody with so much political um, clout. Yeah. So, Momentum. Brianna, yeah. they, they poured $400,000 into this district in the mm-hmm. last yeah. couple of weeks to month of the election, mm-hmm. the Stand For Us PAC. It, is there any information on who the contributors to the Stand For Us PAC uh, are? Um, simple answer, unfortunately, no. It's a dark money group, and uh, it, uh, it's a super PAC, and... By law, they do not have to. They're not required to um, report forward those that information. 
Have you reached out to the Stand for Us pack? Yes. Yeah, I have. I what, have reached out to the Stand for Us What pack. response did you get? No response. <laughs> Zero response. So Katie Zero. Miller is the chair of the Stand for Us PAC. She released a statement after Craig Blair lost, bragging about the PAC's efforts. I'm getting this from uh, an article uh, uh, for the realwv.com. It said, uh, according to reports filed with the Secretary of State, Stand for Us alternated between spending money against Blair and for Willis. All were meant to help Willis defeat Blair. Miller released a statement after Blair lost, seemingly bragging about their efforts. She said that they pulled the race before spending any money on it, and Blair was plus 12 favorable rating and 11-point lead over Willis. Therefore, our strategy was twofold. Launch a sustained assault against Blair on the issue of immigration before he could respond and stunt growth to his image and ballot share, and two, relentlessly promote Willis so he could take advantage of the opening presented by our attacks on Blair. Stand for us continued to pull the race numerous times over the course of their advertising campaign. As it continued, they saw Blair's numbers drop while Willis rose. So the money yeah. certainly did have a huge effect on uh, on the race. Uh, it may or may not have been the only reason why Craig lost that race, but it certainly was a huge reason why he lost. It, it was. I'm in that district, but I did not get a single mailer from from this group, either pro or con. Mm -hmm. And Stand For Us, by the way, did purchase a good deal of advertising on this radio and TV station uh, during the course of that election. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that, really? That yes. much money late late in the, the campaign will do a lot of damage, especially if it's misinformation. It limits I mean, your there's, opportunity there's, to respond. Right, exactly. You just can't respond to it. Brianna, I want to thank you very much. Anything else on this? We've got about two minutes left. If you want to wrap it up, is there any other information that uh, you can share on this that we didn't cover? Yeah, there's there's um, so much. It's a it's a big topic. Um, you know, Katie Miller is a was is a pretty um, known person in the political world. She was uh, Mike Pence's uh, press secretary, and um, her husband was uh, one of Donald Trump's. Um, advisors and speechwriters. Interesting how everything ties in, right? Mm. Brianna, thanks so much. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Good work. Thank you. Thanks, Brianna. Uh, that'll be uh, also on our show coming up after the, uh, the Friday Five convenes. We'll have more on this. I think this is going to be Joe Ferretti's first topic as we uh, start this whole thing here. And there's a, a Senate Bill 325 uh, was also uh, part of the discussion on the RealWV.com article that also covered part of this and where I got the quote from Katie Miller. And I I don't know if, if, if Big Pharma was funding a lot of these ads because they wanted to get rid of the 340B that passed in West Virginia, if they wanted to affect uh, Senate Bill 325, which I'm sure Joe's going to get into as well. Uh, or uh, or or what? But for whatever yeah. reason, this centered on creating a campaign of Craig Blair and some other Senate leaders favoring uh, uh, free health care yeah. for Im illegal immigrants. Well, yeah, Rob, you you mentioned that WRNR took some money. What is the filter that you and other radio stations apply to what ads you would run? I don't think we have the ability to turn right. down. Yeah. Don't uh, you everybody can't. has the right to buy ads? Right, you you can't. That's FCC. Yeah, yeah, we, we, have, can't, yeah. we can't yeah. pick okay. and choose. You have to treat everybody the same. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what the message.